glory to God. Come on, let's lift our hands and thank God for Almighty God. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. We serve a mighty God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to take your medicine? You ready to take your medicine? Praise God. So we're going to declare uh, Psalms 91 together again. And so if you can get those uh, images for me together. Wow. Uh, first of all, let's, let's rejoice with uh, Minister Tam for total victory. And whatever that's attempting to come against her, glory to God. We declare and decree it's over, it's done, it's finished, it's overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. But as she was uh, testifying, I heard this. That if the devil can't shut your mouth, then he'll try to give you what to say. Listen to that. If he can't shut your mouth, he'll try to give you what to say. So if he can't keep you quiet, then he'll try to give you the words to say that will still accomplish what he wants to accomplish by you being quiet. Does that make sense? So in this time, he wants us to either be quiet or talk about the virus. But we're going to choose to do something else. We're going to speak the word of God. I said we're going to speak the word of God. Come on, somebody, y'all with me? We're going to speak the word of God. Amen? Amen. We ready? We ready? Okay, praise God. Let's go ahead and uh, declare this, this together. Psalms 91, beginning at verse number one. Let's say it with some faith and expectation. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lies waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent I shall trample underfoot. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore he will deliver me. He will set me on high because I have known his name. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. With long life he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Can we give the Lord a praise and the glory for the word of God which is true in Jesus name amen glory to God father we bless you so much we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your word we thank you that your word is alive it's powerful it's sharper than any two-edged sword and father as I minister the word today I want to give you thanks for for giving me utterance and Holy Spirit to speak a now word to your people I declare and I decree every heart and every mind is anointed to hear receive and then do the living word of God father I declare and decree that through the word of God today that there shall be revelation, impartation, manifestation, and transformation in the lives of people. That every need shall be met spiritually, physically, and financially. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. High five your neighbor, fist pump them or something, and tell them they're getting this word. Let's get into this word on today, and you may be seated. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Boy, I am excited about the day, boy. Glory to God. I'm telling you what, because I, I believe we can take our time today. Because you ain't got nowhere to go. Come on, somebody. All the stuff gone from the store, so you ain't got to go shopping nowhere. So we can, come on, we can just take our time and just enjoy the Lord. Is anybody with me today? Where you got to rush to? Nowhere. 
Praise God. Amen. Matthew 6. Well, I'm like, glory to God. Lord, you're answering my prayer. You're answering my prayer. I can preach all day long. Ain't got nothing to do. Ah, glory to God. Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 33 is our foundational text for our year of kingdom focus. Glory to God, our year of kingdom focus. Jesus says that if we seek after, aim at, and strive after, uh, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, then all these things will be given to us besides. So that means that if we do our part, he would do his part. And our part is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Where, we, where should we put it? First. Where? First. Amen. Glory to God. So this is the year of kingdom focus. And we've been sharing with you on Sundays our series of lessons called Who Am I? And uh, the foundational text for that has been 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, where it says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And so we understand from our series of lessons, we know that that was a spiritual transformation that takes place when a person becomes born again. Naturally, nothing changes, but inwardly and spiritually, everything changes. We become a brand new creation, a brand new spirit that has never existed before. And so we've shared with you uh, several things over these uh, courses of, of lessons. And if you have missed any, make sure you get the CD MP3 to catch yourself up. Uh, go online. All of our uh, past services are on YouTube or Facebook. You can go back and look at them free of charge. But this is a revelation that we must have settled on the inside of us. Because our authority and our dominion lives from the revelation of our identity. And so if you don't know who you are, then you'll be lacking in the level of authority and the level of dominion that God has called us, called us all as believers to walk in. See, uh, we are to govern things and not be governed by things. Let me say that again. We're supposed to govern things and not be governed by things. That's why we can rise up in this season and say, not my house. We can rise up in this season and say, not in my house. Come on, somebody. No, we can do that because we've been given the authority and the dominion to do that. But you got to know who you are. Amen. Because if you don't, you don't have the weight that, that will stand behind that statement. Glory to God. We're not just natural trying to have a spiritual experience. We are spiritual but having to live in a natural experience. Amen? Glory to God. So let's get into some things uh, on today because I believe that what I have for you today will help you uh, in life, but also in the midst of what's going on uh, in our society, okay? So let me just uh, recap just for a minute because everybody has not been here all the time. We have to understand this, that we've been made in the image and likeness of God. The Bible says in, in Genesis 126 through 120, uh, Genesis 128, that we've been made in the image and likeness of God. Now, we find out from Scripture that God is a three-part being. God is, a, God is God the Father, Jesus the Son, and God Holy Spirit. We refer to that as the Trinity, okay? So now, if God's a three-part being, then we must be a three-part being as well because we were made in an image and likeness of God. God. The word uh, likeness means, excuse me, the word image means exact duplicate of kind. So if God is three parts, then we must be three parts. So, and we are. We are a spirit. Say, I'm a spirit. We have a soul. Say, I have a soul. And we live in the body. Say, I live in the body. So we are a what? Spirit. So who are you? You are a spirit. So the body that's sitting on that seat today is not the real you. The real you lives inside of that body that sits on that seat. Amen. That's why you'll live for eternity. Your body may not live for eternity, but you will because you are a spirit. Shout, shout, I'm a spirit. Now, that's important to understand because you're, it'll help you understand scriptures better because scripture was never written to your flesh. Scripture is always written to your spirit. And so that's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, it says this, the word of God is not un.
most important. It is what we need to be spending our time developing and strengthening. And that's what you're doing here today. You sitting here today, you're, you're doing your part to strengthen your spirit man. Got it? We also looked at the body, the flesh part of us, which out of the three parts is the least important when it comes to spiritual matters. Now, our bodies are important because we need it to exist in the earth. But our bodies are not to call the shots. Our bodies is to now take commands from our spirit. So now in between our spirit, most important, and our body, least important, is our soul. Now, our soul will then slide to whatever part is strongest. So if your flesh is dominating your life, your soul will go hang out with your flesh. If your spirit is dominating with your life, your soul will go hang out with your spirit because your soul wants to be a part of the winning team. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So now we have to learn how to manage and, uh, and bring our soul into cooperation to what our spirit wants to do. See, in the middle of the night at 2 a.m., your spirit hears from God and your spirit says, let's pray. Your flesh says, no, not now, we're sleepy. So now you got to bring your soul into cooperation with your spirit and bring it so that your spirit and soul can tell your body it's time to get up. But see, if you just let your soul run wild, then your soul can be unpredictable and it will cause you to do things where you don't know why you're doing what you do. Have, I asked this question last week. Have you ever been there and you've done something and you look back at what you've done and say, why in the world did I do that? You did that because you thought of doing that. Because you didn't, you didn't control what you were thinking about. Praise the Lord. Lean on somebody and say, I'm really glad you came to church today. I'm really glad. Tell somebody else, I'm really glad you up in here today. I'm really glad that you up in here today. Praise God. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Let's just get, let's go to work. Amen. I can take my time today. Praise God. <laughs> I'm loving this. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse number one says, I appeal, amplified, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Say with me this morning, it's the least I can do. Okay. Do not, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good. is because God thinks differently than we do until we learn how he thinks. And so the, so the endeavor should be that we need to learn how God thinks so that we can end up with his ways. Too often, religious say, religion says, let's try to have his ways without changing the way we think. That's why they can come in and have rituals and then go out and be nasty. Because they've learned his ways without learning how he thinks. 
But see, we want to have a renewing of the mind. We don't want to be, we don't want to be, uh, we don't want to be uh, uh, fake in our demonstration of who we are. If I stand up and say I'm a child of God, I need to have some behavior patterns and some thought patterns to confirm what I just said to you. Because if I don't, I leave you confused and I leave you worse than when you came in contact with me. Because now you got to go back. Now you got to you leave me and now wonder, wonder if what God said is really true because I showed you something different. But everybody shout, not up in here, not up in here. So we're going to not only say it, we're going to live it. But the only way to do that is change the way we what? Think. We got to get God's thoughts in order to have his ways. So if you think, of, if you think like God, you'll, have a, you'll never have another problem with loving somebody. Because I'm up here. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you can't touch this. You can't touch this. <laughs> then, uh, okay, well, watch out, watch out. I go all across this platform, boy. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Jesus. Everybody all right? And so, folks, we got to understand, we can't act like God if we don't first think like God. And the only way we find out how to think like God is we got to get in his word and unveil his thoughts. You got it? See, you got to be you got to be trained. Well, you don't like that word. You got to be taught. To be who God has called you to be. Because it doesn't just it doesn't come automatically. Amen. So let's go to Exodus. Let's look at let's let's look at something here. Book of Exodus, uh, chapter number 32. I want to show you something here and how important it is for us to do the work and and cause our minds to be renewed. Okay, Exodus 32, beginning at verse number one. Uh, Now, the people of God, this little context, the people of God have been. Um, delivered from Egypt supernaturally. Now, if you don't know the story from the Bible, you might know it from uh, the TV program that comes on annually. And y'all, y'all know what my favorite part is in that whole movie? Moses. <laughs> Moses. Moses. The ground that you stand upon is holy ground. That's my favorite part of the whole movie. But Israel was in captivity for 430 years. God sends Moses to be their deliverer and delivers them out of Egypt with a strong hand and the power of God. To the point where they came across the Red Sea, and the Bible says on dry land. So they get on the other side, 
The Red Sea closes in on the, on the Egyptians, kills the Egyptians that were chasing them, so they were, they were delivered from Egypt. So they go into the desert, and Moses hears from God. God says, Moses, go up to on the mountaintop. I got to talk to you about some things. And so Moses, is lead, Moses leaves the congregation and goes to hear from God. So here we pick up in Exodus 32. Verse number one says, Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain. In other words, the people say he's taken too long. The people gathered together unto Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So now they have watched and witnessed and participated in a supernatural deliverance from captivity. Moses is gone for about 40 days and now they're trying to figure out, has God kept them or not? And they go to the leadership of the congregation and says, leadership? Pastor taking too long. You take this and make us gods that will go before us. That's why you got to have good leadership. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. Verse number two. And Aaron said to them, break off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. No, no, he didn't say that. Your Bible ain't said that. <laughs> Maybe it's just the translation I'm using. <laughs> he, said, he said to them, break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. Verse 3. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron without hesitation. Wow. Without hesitation. Wow. I'll say that backwards. Wow. Verse 4. And he received the gold from their hand and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Look at this right here, folks. Then they said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now, 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 let's just talk about how crazy this is. God brought them out. They were already out. They made a calf after they was out. And then said, calf, you brought us out. Is, is that crazy backwards, whatever? No, 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 no. God bought them out. They was already out. They made a calf when they was out. And then they said, calf, you bought us out. That's crazy. All because Moses, pastor, taking too long. But this is a question we got to ask. The question is this. Where did that calf come from? Came from where? Egypt. That calf came from Egypt. Because in Egypt, they saw that as a god. And they began to think of it as a god while they was in Egypt. So they had no trouble reproducing or replicating. See, deliverance 
is when you've come out of Egypt. Freedom is when Egypt has come out of you. Let, 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 let me put it in a more practical way. See, deliverance is when you've come out of poverty. You got a little money now. You got a little money now, but you are more tight now with a little money than when you didn't have much. Why? Because you've come out of poverty, but poverty is still in you. So now you go from giving to get out to hoarding to stay out. Why? Because you've been delivered from poverty, but you've been not made free from poverty. Because if you've been made free from poverty, you know, you'll know how you got out of poverty and you'll keep doing what got you out of poverty to stay out of poverty and go to another place because you not, only have you been made de- not only have you been delivered, you've been made free. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But see, poverty is not a, it's not a condition. Poverty is a state of mind. Because you can have a bunch and still be poverty in, poverty in your thinking. Amen. How do you know? When you're, when you're not able to let go of what you have means what you have has hold of you. Are y'all with me today? So that's, so that's not work just to be delivered and get out of that. Oh, praise God. Whew, I finally got out of that. No, but you got to ask yourself a question. Are you free from it? And the only way you can be free from it is you got to renew your mind towards it. So those people should have rose up in the desert and said, no, no, no. God has delivered us from all, all of Egypt, including its gods. We're just going to wait on Almighty God. But they hadn't been made free because their Egypt thinking was still in them. And see, many of you are sitting here today still got world thinking in you. I ain't calling nobody's name, so don't look, at, no, don't look back at me like that. Don't get hostile. Listen to what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to locate yourself in order for you to get out of where you, where you are. And too many people in the body of Christ have more of the world in their thinking than they do the word in their thinking. And they wonder why things are not lining up with what the word says. It's because they're thinking world too much. Are you hearing this? But we're changing some things. We, we, we're, we're renewing some minds in here. Because we got to think like the word. When we come into a situation, first question we want to ask, what the word say about it? When you heard about all these closings and, and all these stuff and all this kind of stuff, you, your first question should have been, what's the word say about this? The word tells me he delivers me from all destruction. So, yeah, I got to have my kids home for two weeks, at least two weeks. In our case, three weeks. We went out grocery shopping yesterday. And Dr. Wendy looked at me. He's like, these kids got to get back in school. <laughs> I don't know, something got to happen. Something, something got to happen. I've been here because. Because, see, when they're in school, you ain't got to worry about lunch at home. You know, you, you know they, they normally grab breakfast when they go out the door and, you know, just a little something. And now, now you know, they, they, they wake up and they, you know, you, like, praise the Lord. No, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Thank you, God, for these rewards, but praise the Lord. You hear what I'm saying? And so you got to think about, okay, what, what? wherever to the store and have them unload 45 minutes before I arrive to the store so I'm the first one at the, at the counter I'm at the, at the thing to get the thing then that's what you got to do because you said all my needs going to be met but how many people in the body cries ain't no more toilet paper I 
know where I'm going to get some toilet paper. <laughs> Trust me, folks. God knows where toilet paper is. <laughs> and if it's not there, he'll create it. I went to one of the wholesale uh, uh, stores and, and typically in the back they have all the paper towels and stuff kind of stacked up. And so I rolled back there and they had lawn furniture. <laughs> and I said, this is different. And I said, and I said okay, you know, stores always kind of rearrange stuff. This is kind of, you know, you know, how many of you have, have been to the store so much you've studied, you know, the, the spices on aisle seven? on the left hand side and, and then you walk in and then mess around and rearrange the store. They got the, the spices on now. Left. Like, why are you moving? <laughs> Leave the stuff the way it is. So I rolled back down. I was like, man, they must have put it over here with the other paper goods and stuff. Huh? And so I go over there and I was like, ain't nothing changed over here. I said, what? And so I saw an associate come out from the back. I said, hey, sir, you know, it, it, where, where, where the paper tiles? He said, we all out. I said, you're out. He said, yeah, we're out. We're sold out. Truck's supposed to be here tomorrow. I said, wow. Because we was on our last roll at the house. I said, whoa. Then all of a sudden I heard Amazon. I pulled out my smartphone. I ordered the paper towels in the store. And it was at my house the next day. I ain't freak out and run around five different stores trying to find no paper towels. God know where the paper towels is. He told me Amazon. Guess what? I got some paper towels, praise the Lord. And we got toilet paper, praise the Lord. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that's all a thought pattern, folks. That's all thinking. That's all thinking. And see, so you hear about school closing and then you go home, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. And, and your children hear that and your children then pick it up and start repeating it. Now your house is broadcasting Something that's contrary to what the word says because you didn't re you have renewed your mind to respond to things by the word than instead of, uh, instead of responding th to things by the word. situation that the what's being broadcast those are just suggestions for us to think on some things okay it's just it's just all you know every news broadcast gives us suggestions on what to think of but you don't have to think on any of it now don't get me wrong be aware and be responsible but you don't have to be so inundated that you take on their thoughts as your own. You see what I'm saying? Because as far as I'm concerned, we settled this three weeks ago when we, when we took our medicine for the first time and declared no, no plague shall come down my dwelling. So for me, it's a done deal. I mean, it's, it's a moot point. No, me, no more reason to talk about whether it's going to come or not. It, it may come to my neighbor, but it's not coming up in my house. Amen. So we have to understand that we're responsible for our thinking, okay? 
Uh, Third John verse two says, beloved, amplified, I pray that you may prosper in every in every way and that your and that your body may keep well. Look at this. Even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. That's a powerful statement because. We experience in life the abundance of what we think about. Okay. So if you think of something abundantly, it begins to consume and fill your life with those thoughts. Okay? So folks, if you think you're going to get sick, it's just a matter of time before you will. But if you think you're going to be well, stay well, then you're going to stay well. You see what I'm saying? Because every year, we, can, we, we see some people, they get the same challenges, health challenges, every year at the same time. It's because there's an expectation to get that every year. So until they change that expectation, they're going to see that every year. Amen. You know, like for me, I used to, uh, you know, uh, uh, sinuses, hay fever, whatever you want to call it. You know, when the pollen and stuff come out, you kind of get like a little scratch in, 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 in the back of your throat and those kind of things. And uh, for years, I used to get it all, same time, all the time. I, it, comes, it comes from my family line because my, uh, my mother deals with it as well. And so, but I, I, a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago now, I just made up my mind. I ain't going to have this every year. I'm not going to have this yet. And I'm not going to wait until it comes on completely to start combating. As soon as I, as soon as I sense the first scratch, I'm going to handle it with the word. And so don't you know that... Uh, you know, it attempted to, to scratch last week. I said, nope, no, 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 no. Nope, nope, no plague comes down my dwelling. I stopped it right then and there. I don't have no scratch today, and I'm not going to have no scratch tomorrow. I'm not going to have no scratch next day, no next week. I'm not going to have it. Amen. Yeah, look, some of y'all looking at me funny. Like, I wouldn't say that. No, I, I would. And you better. Amen. Amen. Number two. All right, let's go. Now we can go to work. See, it took all that time to get y'all ready for this. But that's all right. Y'all, yeah, it helps you. Look at this. Number two. Second way to renew our minds. First way is what? Understand that you are responsible for what? Your thinking. Okay. Number two, you got to learn how to bring contrary thoughts into captivity. You have to learn how to bring contrary thoughts, that thoughts is contrary to the word of God, into captivity. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10. Let's look at this, 2 Corinthians 10. Bringing what? Contrary thoughts into captivity. Now, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of what, folks? What? Strongholds. Okay, so now, this scripture is telling us that we don't fight with our flesh. We don't fight carnally. Because you can't defeat spiritual matters from a natural standpoint. Okay? See, because what happens is, is that we think that we are, we're more powerful the louder we pray. But the power doesn't come from volume. The power comes from revelation. So I can be ignorant of what God's will is for my life and pray as loud as I can and still get no results because I'm trying to do it carnally. I'm trying to do it with volume versus revelation. Are y'all seeing this? So, Because I, I can get more done with revelation and a whisper than ignorance and high volume. 
Y'all seeing this? So the scripture is saying that we don't fight carnally, but the weapons we have are mighty. Everybody shout mighty. Say my weapon is mighty. My weapon is mighty. Come on. Say, my, 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 say, it, say it again. My weapon is mighty. Now, it's not only mighty, but it's mighty in or through God. So this is a weapon that God has given us to use. And what is it used for? For the pulling down. Everybody say pulling down. Pulling down of what? Strongholds. Now, what's a stronghold? A stronghold is a thought castle. Strongholds are thought castle. Now, think in your mind. Uh, Dr. Wendy likes medieval kind of stuff. Uh, kings and queens and, 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 and those kind of things. And she, she watches you know, these documentaries and these miniseries about, you know, uh, knights and kings and queens and royalty and all that kind of stuff. She can probably name you all the kings of England um, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. She just like those kind of stuff. So because I like being with her, sometimes I got, I'll be watching some of the stuff she watched. It just comes with the package. It's like, you know, the water comes, uh, wet comes with the water. So because, you know, I like hanging out and she got it on, then you do, I just, I can't sit there and ignore the television. And then she'll talk about things. And so we, so we look at these things. So, and so in some cases, we see what a castle looks like. See, we don't understand what castles are here in our, in our region because we really don't have those kind of things. But castles oftentimes, sometimes have moats around them. Okay, let me tell you what a moat is. Y'all looking like, what is a moat? A moat is it's like a big ditch that's full of water. And sometimes they put wooden spikes underneath the water. So if you try to get across, you'll you know, get cut and all that kind of stuff. Because what are they doing? They're trying to prevent illegal entry into the castle. And normally they have you know, a wall around it. And then they're on, in one place in the wall, they don't have many entries. They have one place in the wall, you either got to go in and go out, and then they lower the drawbridge, they, they lower the bridge down that'll let you come across the moat safely. Y'all know what I'm talking about? See, what happens is when we get thoughts and when we embrace thoughts and we keep getting the same thought, it reinforces the thoughts that we have. In our soul and in our mind, we begin to construct thought castles. We begin to th construct thought patterns that we then begin to protect. And there's only one way in and one way out. And we control the entry. And we control the exit. So now you have a thought castle when you come into the kingdom of God. You have a thought castle when you come into the, uh, to, to service, uh, into church services and encounters. And now God is sending regimens of truth. And the regimens of truth are surrounding your castle. And you have to be the one to either let the bridge down or you keep the bridge up. But see, if you never let the bridge down and let the truth of God's word come in, it will not be able to eradicate or erode what you've been thinking to give you something else to think. That's why you can come in here and get truth and revelation and go home the same. Because you didn't let the truth in to take care of your thought castle. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Tell your neighbor, say, you got to change the way you think. Now tell your other neighbor, say, you got to let some of this truth in, man. You got to let some of this truth in. So we live with these thought castles. We got a thought castle about healing and health. We got a thought castle about prosperity. We got a thought castle about peace. We got thought castles about others. We got thought castles about our own, the will of God for our lives. We got thought castles about our own future. We got thought castles about the hurt and the pain and the frustration that we've gone through. We got all these thought castles uh, happening in our mind. But the Bible says we've been given a weapon that's mighty enough to pull all that down. Glory to God. Y'all seeing this? Let's, let's continue here. It says this. It says here in verse number five, casting down what? Arguments. And every, everybody say every, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing how many thoughts? Every thought where? In the captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Oh, gosh, oh, my, man, this is amazing. Okay, now, so he's saying here now, we have the ability of, of God to pull down arguments and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you get knowledge, you get knowledge from God, and you're supposed to put it up here. Then every thought that tries to come up against that, that knowledge 
you're supposed to pull that down. Now, when you pull that down, what remains? The God thought. Because every time you get a God thought, the enemy is going to unleash all, all he can to come grab that thought and pull it down because he wants to have the dominant thought in your life. That's why he says that we got to get understanding because if we don't get understanding, then the devil comes and steals it. That's why sometimes when y'all come in here, sometimes, and y'all get revelation and you get the answers, sometimes you just need to go straight home. You don't need to go out to eat. You don't need to talk to nobody. You need to go straight home and meditate on the truth that you got because that was your answer to get out. Too often we get an answer and we go right out there in the lobby and we talk to somebody that's not seeing what you see and let them give you another thought and it pulls down the thought that you're supposed to have. So you go home empty when you were full. Are y'all hearing this? Sometimes you just got to go, hey, I'll see y'all next week. Why they in such a hurry? I don't know. But you're working on some stuff. And you're working on keeping this God thought exalted because it's trying to be pulled down by the thoughts of the world and the thoughts of the enemy. But see, it's your responsibility to release, release the grip of this, of this thought and pull it down. And the thing about it is, folks, you can do it. You've been empowered to do it. Glory to God. And see, you got to keep it down because the more you think on this God thought, it's going to bring obedience in your life. And when you obey the word of God, you punish disobedience. Are y'all seeing this? And see, that doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen off one sermon a lot of times. You've got to keep on feeding this God thought and pulling down this, this ungodly thought. Feeding this thought and pulling this down. Feeding this and pulling it down. Feeding this and pulling it down. Feeding this and pulling this down. Feeding this and pulling this down. So we, you came in here today. You heard about the covenant of healing. You heard that God heals all our diseases. You heard that he's a covenant-keeping God. You have took your medicine that says no plague comes, now you're dwelling. So you got this God thought. You can't go home and listen to the news and let something come grab it. Your mission in life can't be the next day to find out how many, people, how many more people have contracted it. Because it's trying to come against the God thought. And it's your responsibility to cast that down. Cast that down. Cast that down. Cast that down. And let me show you how to cast that down. When you got a God thought and it's being attacked by the enemy, the way you keep this up and cast this down, you got to say this. With his stripes, I'm healed. You, I'm hurting. Cast it down. With his stripes, I'm healed. I'm in pain. Cast it down. With his stripes, I'm healed. What the doctor say? Cast it down. How you cast it down? By saying the thought. Because thoughts follow your words. Are y'all getting anything today? So we can't come in here and sing, God, you're my healer. You're my portion. You're more than enough. That he's a mighty God. That there's power in the name. And then see scriptures that say, no play come nigh dwelling in. And that he heals all our diseases. You can't come in here and get all that and then say something different. Because what you say contrary is keeping the thought castle built. When you got to start tearing that thing down. Eradicating it. So you can exalt the God thought. Are y'all with me today? Take your neighbor saying, you can do this too and you can do it. You can do it. Because you, you got a weapon from God that's mighty. And what's your weapon? The word of God. Then the Bible says the word of the God is the sword of the spirit. Come on. Well, you, you ain't got to look, look far from the weapon. The weapon is the word. You fight with the word. You don't fight with your fist. You fight with the word. Come on, y'all. So to keep that God thought, you got to keep saying that God thought. And the more you say that God thought, this negative thought has had less and less and less and less and less power over what you, what you think. 
Amen? Can y'all handle five more minutes? Praise God. Okay? Now, let's go a little further. Let's go over to uh, Joshua chapter number one, and then we'll be where we, where we need to be. Praise God. See, I ain't going to keep y'all that much longer. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So first way to meditate uh, or to renew our minds is what? Understand that you're what? Uh-huh. Number two is what? Okay, let's go to Philippians 4 real fast. Let me show you something. Let me show you something, and then I'll, I'll do number three, and then I'll close it up, okay? Let me show you something here. Uh, Philippians 4, 8. Philippians 4, 8. Let me, let me show you something here. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are what? At what? So that means you should not be considering lies. I thought I'd get a better amen than that. But okay, you should not be considering lies. Now let me tell y'all something. Something is not true until you have evidence of its truth. Why do I say that? Because if somebody tell, comes and tells you what they think about somebody, that ain't true until you can prove that it's true. Until then, it still be a lie. That was worth y'all coming right there. I mean, okay, because some of y'all, some of y'all have missed your divine appointments because you listen to somebody else. God has or, God had ordained somebody to bless your life, but you never encountered them because you listened to somebody else or what they said about them, which which hindered you from stepping into your divine appointment because God had put something in them for you, but you never got it because you chose to listen to somebody that, th that you thought knew what they was talking about. Just trying to help you. Amen. Finally, brethren, whatever things are what? True. Whatever things are what? Noble. Whichever, whatever things are just. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are what? Good report. So we shouldn't be dealing with bad reports. If there's any what? Virtue. If there's any what? Anything praiseworthy. What should you do with these things? So now if you can meditate on these things, then that means you, you don't have to meditate on other things. Which proves who's, who's responsible or who's in control of your thinking. We are. Amen. Okay, and let's go to number three. Now, the third way to uh, renew our minds, uh, and then we'll wrap it up uh, after this. Praise God. Thank you all for staying engaged. Meditate on, you have to meditate on the Word of God. Now, I want to spend just a moment or so, and then I got to pick this up uh, next, time we, uh, next time we're together. Meditate on the Word of God. Everybody say meditate. Okay, meditate on the Word of God. Now, let me first say this. Meditation, biblical meditation is not sitting on the floor with your legs crossed and your palms up and your two fingers crossed put together with sounds of water dripping in the background that's not that's not biblical medication okay everybody clear on that so when I say meditate don't sit there you got to get in the quiet room and sit in the middle and do that okay I just want to be clear Joshua chapter 1 verse number 8 <laughs> oh. See, when you want to help people, you got to be thorough. Yeah. All right. Joshua 1 8 says this. Look at this. This book of the law. Everybody say the word of God. Okay, this book of the law. Now, when Joshua, when this was written, they only had a certain portion of the book. We have the whole book. So we really have an advantage over those that was in the old covenant. It says, this book of the law, if I say the word of God, shall not depart out of your what? Mouth. Okay, shouldn't depart out of your mouth. But you shall what? Meditate on it. How often? How often? So you should be meditating on it now, and you should be meditating on it later. Correct? Now, what does meditate mean? Meditation 
Biblical meditation means you're either reading it, studying it, you're thinking on it, thinking about it, pondering it, it's three steps, and then you mutter it back to yourself. So you read it, you think it, think about it, or read it, study it, you think about it, you ponder it, and you speak it back to yourself. Now the most impactful part of meditation is you speaking it back to yourself. That's why a lot of times I have you say things because I want you to, because it's part of meditation. The truth I give you as you're thinking about it, I want you to say it about yourself so it can reinforce it. Because you believe you more than you believe anybody else. So if you hear you say it, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Does that make sense? Look at this. Day and night that you may observe, see something. That you may observe, see something, and do according to all that is written in it. In what? The word of God. Here's the result. For then you shall make your way what? prosperous and then you shall deal what wisely and have good success everybody say prosperous deal wisely and have good success okay so those are results of what meditation so you don't get those things and then meditate you meditate the word in order to get those things you see what i'm saying so now i encourage you today from this word that you got today to go home Read and study it, think about it, and then say it back to yourself. Do that today, do that tomorrow, do that Tuesday, do that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then come back in and report on Sunday. Got it? But see, it's a process. It's something that we got to do all the time. It's not just relegated to one, one particular time. Now, meditation. Everybody say meditation. Now, how are we going to meditate? Read it, study it. What else? Think about it. And then we're going to do what? Mutter it back to ourselves. Speak it back to ourselves. So when I'm studying the word, 1 Peter 2.24, with his wounds, by his wounds I've been, I've been made, uh, made healed or I've been healed. I, I read that. I study that. I think about that. And you know what I say? By his wounds I have been, made, I have, I have been healed. By his wounds I have been healed. By his wounds. I have been healed. By his wounds, I have been healed. What am I doing? I'm building a thought in me. And even if I'm sick, if I keep meditating on that thought, it's going to override the thought of sickness. Why? Because I'm feeding this and I'm starving this. And eventually, if you starve it, it'll die out. You with me? So the question is this, how long do we meditate? How long do you meditate? How long? Day and night. You meditate day and night for how long? Until? Until when? How long do you meditate? For the rest of your life? Yeah? Rest of your days? Huh? Talk to me. I'm asking a question. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me qualify it just a little bit. You are right in saying you meditate for the rest of your days. But you meditate something until you see what you've been meditating on. Listen to this. Without even having to look for it. See, the beginning of the process, you, got, you are looking for what you're meditating about. But at some place, what you're meditating is going to come so real that you're going to see it without even looking for it. And when you can see it without looking for it, you know you got it. Amen. Come on, stand. Let's give God praise. Y'all blessed today? Yes? Amen. Come on, let's stand and give God praise. Lift up your hand. Let's thank God for his word. Let's thank God for his goodness. Father, we thank you, and we praise you, and we give you glory today. Thank you, Lord God, for the word of God. Thank you for empowering us through the word of God. And God, we ask you today to help us renew our minds. Thank you for helping us understand that it's our responsibility for our thinking. Help, thank you for helping us cast down or bring down all contrary thoughts according to the word. And Father, I thank you for helping us meditate the word so we can do it until we see what we need to see and do what we need to do so that we can have good success and prosperity. I give you praise and I give you glory for the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God is good, amen. Let's bow your head, close your eyes. I want to give opportunity for those that are here today that uh, may have a spiritual need.
And we want that spiritual need to be met. First opportunity today is to be born again, to be born again. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that it's God's will that all be saved and none perish. So if you're here today and you've never invited Jesus into your life, you've never asked the Lord to come into your life, then today is your day. This is your time. This is your moment. Because God sent his son Jesus to die for you, to die for all of us, so that we can have an opportunity to have a relationship with him. Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except by him. And so if you're here today and you say, Pastor, that's me, I'm, I'm not saved, I've not invited Jesus into my life, but I want to get saved today, I want to give my heart to Jesus. If that's you, would you lift your hand as you're standing today? Because we want to pray with you. We want to pray for you today. If you're here today and you want to give your heart to Jesus, you want to be born again for the first time, receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then today is your day. This is your time. Glory to God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Secondly, today is this. Maybe you're here and, and you gave your heart to Jesus at some point, but for whatever reason you've fallen out of fellowship. You're living your life like you've never been saved before. If that's you, there's no need to condemn yourself anymore because I have good news for you because God not only forgives us, he also restores us. And God will restore your relationship today. All he requires is you come to him and and repent. Repent simply means to turn and go the other way. And your relationship will be restored today in Jesus' name. So if you're here today and say, Pastor, That's me. I haven't been living like I'm supposed to live. I haven't been living like a child of God, but I want to get that right today. I want to rededicate and recommit my life to Jesus. If that's you, would you lift your hand as you're standing today? Because we want to pray for you as well. We want to pray for you as well. We want you to leave this place knowing that your relationship is in a good place with God. Amen. Amen. Thirdly today is this. Every believer is has an opportunity to experience the second work of grace we call baptism with Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. With, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. If that's you today, I want to encourage you to step out in faith and receive this because it comes with another dimension of power and another dimension of prayer. See, as believers, we need to have all that God has for us. And God has an experience for us that he can grant us not only power in us but also power on us so we can be witnesses for Jesus wherever we go and also a prayer language where we can pray at a whole nother dimension way beyond our English understanding our spirit man begins to pray open up doors of revelation and truth that we've never seen before and that's for you today so if you're here today and you say pastor I'm saved but I, I'm ready for the next dimension of power and prayer. I'm ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If that's you, would you lift your hand today as you're standing? Because we want to pray for you as well. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. And then lastly today is this. Every person, every believer needs to be in a good church. And a good church is one that's going to tell you the truth, that's going to help you be developed in the Word of God. And so if you're here today and you sense this you sense a connection with me as a pastor. You sense a connection with this ministry. And you want to connect with us. You want to become a partner of Faith Christian Center International. We just simply want you to obey God. And I'm telling you, we'll be honored and privileged to have you be a part of what we're doing here through the ministry.